The United States planning to resume regular evacuation flights from Afghanistan before the end of the year. The end of the year. This is according to the State Department. Good news for the hundreds of Americans left behind. However, no date has been determined for the flights to resume as arrangements with neighboring countries are still being worked out. Joining me now is Hudson Institute senior fellow Rebecca Heinrichs. We do this story to remind people of all the folks, Americans and our allies and our friends who are still in Afghanistan. Rebecca. Thank you so much, Dagan, for covering this. This is a topic that the Biden administration obviously wants to get out of the news, out of the headlines. They don't want Americans talking about this. It's been a couple of months since we have left Afghanistan officially, and there are still Americans in Afghanistan under the rule of the Taliban. So the Biden administration intends to hope, you know, you see all of these hypotheticals, maybe we would like to get flights leaving Afghanistan in the next couple of months. That means a couple more months of American uh, citizens, permanent residents, green card holders, and those who worked with the United States and took a chance on the United States against the Taliban. They're all still stuck there at the mercy of the Taliban until we get them out. I want to move on to the oil and gas situation. Do you have a White House that took uh, acts to our energy sector, uh, an economic driver in this country, a source of prosperity, not just in terms of jobs and economic growth, but cheap and plentiful fuel. Also, energy independent, the world's largest producer of oil, it gives us power over other nations on the world stage, over nations that rely on oil and production for their funding. And so it gives us power over nations that hate us. So they've taken in the White House a, an ax to our energy sector. Now, after begging OPEC to produce more, the White House is reportedly consulting with oil and gas producers to try and find ways to bring down rising fuel prices for consumers. You can't make up this idiocy. The national average for a gallon of regular gasoline is now at $3.30 a gallon. That's up more than a buck compared to a year ago. Heating bills this winter are expected to soar. Rebecca, what do you make of this complete mismanagement of our, one of our greatest resources? The Biden administration is being controlled by this radical, a faction of the Democratic Party that prioritizes almost like a religion, um, environmentalism above everything else, even if it means the salt of the earth, working class Americans are the ones that are going to suffer. We are heading into winter. Gas prices are going to continue to go up. And I keep thinking about how Jen Psaki said that she thought that it would be unfair um, if, if companies were to pass on the price to consumers if they were taxed. And now how they're, at, they're, they're doing the same thing to these gas companies. They're asking them to drop the prices after they've just, as you said, taken an ax to their ability to increase supply. I mean, this, this administration doesn't understand um, economics 101, or they do understand it, and they just don't care. They've made a decision to prioritize these environmentalist groups at the expense of everyday hardworking Americans. James, jump in here to go through what they've done this year, the Biden administration. They killed the Keystone XL pipeline. They stopped new oil and gas drilling leases on federal land, which was stopped by a, a, a judge. I mentioned this earlier. But then in this $3.5 trillion, really $5 trillion Bernie Sanders blowout that the, the left is trying to push through, there are royalty and fee increases that, again, would hurt our oil and natural gas producers on the world stage. Yeah, uh, many, many incentives in that bill to, uh, to push uh, the U.S. toward uh, wind and, and solar power, which is very unreliable and away from natural gas and, and oil. And I think it's not a surprise that U.S. producers, uh, yes, they're being disciplined about uh, their capital expenditures, but they also have to look down the road and say, are we really going to be able to uh, reap the benefits from new investment? I, I know the president likes to talk about infrastructure, but uh, pipelines are infrastructure. Uh, refineries are infrastructure. Um, rigs are infrastructure. So uh, let's hope that uh, he can be persuaded to uh, uh, somehow turn away from the, uh, the Sanders agenda toward less U.S. production. Before we go, Rebecca, will this 
the skyrocketing price of fuel bills, whether it's gasoline, heating oil, natural gas. Will this wake up the White House, Rebecca, and, and pr stop them from governing for Greta Thunberg? Well, they've got to hear from the American people, and so the media has to keep putting the squeeze on them. But on infrastructure, I'll tell you the one piece of infrastructure with pipelines they do care about is that Russian pipeline Nord Stream 2. So they canceled the Americans' ability to, to have cheaper gas, have more gas with Keystone, but they went ahead and green-lighted Nord Stream 2, which is going to be bad for NATO, but it does help the Russians. It sure does. Again, we have easily and knowingly handed power to nations that hate us in every way. Thank you, Rebecca Heinrichs. Great to see you.